Hey everyone, hope you are doing very well. Welcome back to another video. In this particular video, we're gonna be taking a look at an update and what we've purchased for the Limitless build. This build is consisting of the Castle 1721 2400 KV brushless motor along with the XLX2 electronic speed control. This combination is an absolute beast and there's tons of potential that we haven't even gotten close to tapping into yet. So that's kind of our approach and the way that we're gonna be doing this is a slow build up all the way to see where we can go with this particular build. Now I'm gonna go through a thing that I've purchased for the build and I'm gonna go through a concern that I have. Hopefully you guys can you know, give me some tips there as to what we can do and I'm gonna go and take a look at gearing. I probably should say that I will be throwing a curveball at all of you. If you're a patron of this channel, you may already have an idea as to what I'm referring to. And if you don't, you will definitely find out very shortly. Make sure you check the patron website there. Uh, thanks a lot for your support. You are the guys that make all of this happen. And for the subscribers of this channel, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about within the next week or two. Now, first off, this is one thing that I have purchased within the last several days. This is the GPS analyzer that comes from Sky RC. So, so far, I'm pretty happy about it. I don't want to talk too much about it. I'm still testing and I've only really had it in one vehicle, the 1.8 scale buggy that you guys have seen on the channel here already. An obvious advantage of purchasing purchasing that GPS is that we're able to get rid of that GPS that I had mounted. It was a Garmin right on the back of the vehicle. That's no longer needed. I can now put the GPS somewhere underneath the body here of the Limitless, keep it well protected, and I can access it anytime I want right through an app that's on my cell phone. So that's pretty exciting to be able to do and use. Looking forward to more testing on that. There were a few of you that reached out and said that I should pick up something similar to this unit here, which is why I currently now own it. Now the stock spur gear that existed on the Limitless is this one here, and it's a 34 tooth gear. The one that we currently have in the Limitless is a 42 tooth gear that was selected because we have a 2400 kV motor running on ADAS, which gives us a lot of RPM. And to hit only 100 miles an hour, we don't need to throw all this kind of gearing at it. And we can limit the amount of heat buildup in our setup just by going with the correct gearing to hit the target speed. However, now we're gonna start to turn the dial up and see exactly what the Limitless can do with this type of power system. So we're gonna go from that 42, we're not gonna go all the way to a 34 tooth gear, we're gonna go to one that I've picked up and that is a 39 tooth gear. And one of the things that I want to do is figure out what is the potential top speed that we can hit with this Limitless by using the calculator and figuring it out for the 39 tooth spur gear, matching a good combination for spur slash pinion gear on our Limitless build. So we'll take a look at that very shortly. Before going through the calculation there for top speed, I do want to go over my current concern and that is the radio that I use. I use a Spectrum DX 4C radio for all the radio control car and boats that I do have. Now, one of the things that I'm looking at is either replacing this radio with something else, which does mean I'm gonna have to purchase a dozen or so receivers for all the rest of the vehicles that I have, or maybe getting a signal booster because the current issue that I need to fix is range issues. I'm getting a lot less range out of this than I ever remember, especially from my old Futaba setup. So this is definitely something on the list to figure out if there is a good solution. Another thing that I'm thinking that I'm going to be trying as well, and we'll see if it's possible, is seeing if I'm able to get myself elevated up from the ground um, several feet and see if that makes any difference to radio range. If any of you have a suggestion as to what I should do with my radio situation here, leave that in the comment section right below and I'll get around to reading as many of those as I can. And I certainly appreciate any of you who do take a look at that. Now let's take a look at our calculation to determine 
what kind of performance we can get out of this vehicle using the 39 tooth pinion gear. I'm going to be able to show you exactly what's new on the Patreon RC calc sheet. Let's go through it. First thing that we need to do is jump onto the Patreon website and click the link for the version 1.007 that's been most recently released. If you're watching this video sometime in the future, then you just need to look for the most recent release. Every month there is a new version that is released here on the Patreon site with updates and new features added. So once this is clicked, then you're going to arrive at a screen here that is going to force you to make a copy. Now, the first thing you have to do is make a copy of the spreadsheet. If you do not receive a copy of the spreadsheet, you will be unable to edit the spreadsheet and use the spreadsheet. So after we click make a copy, it'll bring us to this next screen. And this is essentially the screen that will allow us to select any of the calculators there that are along the bottom of these tabs here. And the first thing we wanna do and show for this one is the RC car gearing and speed KV calculator. The new addition for this month is everything here on the right hand side. This is everything that we've added, which will help us now place the value for the loaded voltage per cell that is going to be used in this area here, right from the maximum voltage per cell, which consists of the voltage that you have actually charged the batteries and are making your run at. So typically, speed run guys, we like to charge our packs full and we're using our battery at 4.2 volts per cell, which is the maximum voltage for a LiPo pack at 100% state of charge. So in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at what happens when we start to modify our pinion gear to see what the limit list can now do. So looking at where we have come from, we were sitting right around the 104 mile per hour mark, which is right where we actually have hit with the limit list and back-to-back -back runs there proving that that is a true value, both when it took flight and when we were able to keep the limitless on the ground. Uh, so this is an eight cell 2400 KV setup. We are not changing this. We are now playing around with the pinion gear and the spur gear setup. Going from 42, we can now change this to 39. So we're subtracting three. All I'm gonna do here is add three teeth to our pinion gear. This way we are keeping the same mesh distance from axes to axes on both of those gears. That distance is going to be unchanged from what we've done here. So now taking a look at what we're dealing with, I am expecting that the load factor is going to go up. So 12%, I'm gonna leave it at that because I don't think it actually hit 12% before. I'm gonna think that it's at or closer to 12% for this run. However, our calculated load voltage per cell here is going to be different. Why? Well, we're going to go to a faster speed. So what we have to do is consider drawing more current. I'm expecting that anyone who's targeting the 100 mile per hour mark, you're probably gonna be somewhere near the 250 amps on 8S, and you could do the math to figure out what kind of amperage this would be on 6S and 4S as well. In terms of us going up to the 130 mile per hour mark, I'm expecting that we're probably gonna be somewhere around the 350 to 400 amp mark at speed. So this is not during the acceleration, this is closer to when you actually hit that top speed. Something to keep in mind there as the motor does unload and pull a little bit less current from your pack at that speed. So we're gonna leave 350 or 400 on the screen and just see what this is going to give us. With 400 amps, with these terrible batteries, our loaded voltage is going to drop at 2.2, 2.96 volts per cell, which is absolutely terrible. And this is because the average internal resistance per cell that we're using is 3.1 milliohms. If you're using packs that have a high internal resistance like this one here, that is not good. Uh, getting new packs would definitely help this out. So at 400 amps, we would probably expect about 185 kilometers an hour, 150 
15 miles per hour. If we were somewhere close to 350 amps, we're looking at almost 200 kilometers an hour or 121 miles per hour. So that is the new addition to the sheet and we would expect that our system is going to be somewhere in the 190 kilometer an hour mark, which is definitely a step up. And then going to beefier batteries is going to make all the difference in the world and more than likely an absolute requirement as we're going to start getting into ripple voltage issues as we climb the ladder and go to different gearing. That's what I'm expecting, so let's see how it all plays out. That's pretty much it for this update video. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to check out these two videos that YouTube suggests specifically for you, and subscribe if you haven't. Thanks a lot, guys, for watching. See you in the next one.